Welcome back. This is John Locke, and today I'm going to answer this question from the big SEO board on Reddit. But I'm also going to do a deep dive into some uh, talk about Google Patents and specifically uh, about some patents that were originally filed in 2006 that were approved in 2015 but have continued to be updated even into 2019. And we're going to be using uh, some reference material from uh, the SEO by the Sea blog by Bill Swalski. So let's dive into this question from Reddit. Now this person says, how do you cross link between different silo posts? I've read that cross silo linking causes some sort of confusion and hinders your authority from being built in the niche. Now for those who don't know, what a silo is. Generally speaking, it's where you set up both the site architecture structure and um, a page linking structure to where at the top there might be level one um, pages up here. They link down into second tier uh, pages and then at the bottom there might be third uh, level pages but these all generally point up into the silo they call a silo but an example of this could be let's say at the top you have a page called services and it has a list maybe five or six different services that you offer then in the second tier you might have each of those five or six pages that are the individual services but they might have um, even sub pages of that there might be uh, further explanations and breakdowns of uh, some components of those services uh, and you do see this a lot out in the wild but the the idea is that the links um, you're interlinking between these different pages now uh, the metric that is commonly referred to sometimes is called link juice uh, sometimes it's called link equity but back in the day, it was originally called PageRank, and it was named after Larry Page, one of the, the founders of Google. And this PageRank basically is a measure of how much value that a hyperlink passes from one page to the other. And remember on the web, hyperlinks are, are, have always been part of every search engine uh, algorithm. Uh, with the idea that if you have um, a site or if you have an individual page, an individual web page, and a lot of websites that are um, within that category or within that industry or linking to that page, that page is perceived to have a value and importance. Now, back in the day, back in the late 90s, very early 2000s, um, it didn't have that qualifier of uh, being important just based on having uh, other sites linking to it that were within that category. In the very early days of search engines, you could pretty much take any uh, type of link from any page and it would pass page rank without having uh, any other qualifiers. Well, since then, search engines have gotten a lot more complex, a lot more sophisticated, and there's a lot more nuance. Um, also since then, too, the, the ranking algorithm in itself is comprised of a lot of smaller algorithms that combine um, kind of like, you know, like if you're twisting up like wire into like little cords, those cords uh, kind of combine into a larger uh, chord. That's that's a good analogy for what um, the the Google ranking algorithm is today. It's comprised of uh, thousands, or you know, even more more than that, of of different smaller algorithms. But let's talk about this, and then we're going to go to the analysis of the Google patents, and we're going to talk more about PageRank, aka Link Equity, the value that you get from hyperlinks from another site linking to yours. Um, so this person is talking about cross-linking. It causes confusion. 
Cross-linking is definitely good within your site, what we usually call internal linking, because the pages on your own website can pass that page rank and that link equity to each other. Every web page can pass link equity to another. Uh, but there, there might also be qualifiers on it, such as it might get, uh, if Google senses it's from a bad neighborhood like a link farm or article farm or things that are uh, things that are set up simply to manipulate the power of link equity or page rank. Those might get downgraded. They might get hit with a multiplier that actually downgrades the value of it to almost nothing. Uh, but if you get you know, hyperlinks from sites that are in the main content, that might add a multiplier, right? It might make it more valuable. If you get hype, hyperlinks from... Um, other sites that are very closely related to your site, that might have another multiplier on it that makes them more valuable than just a link from a random site on a, you know, linking to yours. Um, so when it comes to authority, where does authority come from? Um, a lot of people have talked about EAT, expertise, authority, trustworthiness. A lot of authority is still comes from uh, the types of links that you're getting, uh, you know, whether sites that are related to yours are linking to yours. There are other things that Google that I believe, a lot of people believe, that they use. And I will put a link here to a card here about Google user signals. That is another thing that they can use to judge whether they're giving you good results and whether people are responding to a page in a way that shows that they are satisfied with it. Uh, but essentially, still, authority, a lot of it comes from other sites linking to you and the types of sites that are linking to you. Uh, that is still a proxy for authority. Okay, so beyond that, let's go to this. The siloing thing is kind of irrelevant. Like if you set up your site in a structural way that makes sense, you're going to be fine. But don't try and use a silo as a gimmick to try and make certain pages rank higher. The best thing to do is get a natural link profile with good content on each page on a site that uh, has good user experience. Let's go to the SEO by the sea blog here. Now this is a one, this is an article from almost four years ago to the day, almost four years ago today. Sorry, can't get my hand in there. Uh, anyway, this is from uh, November 9th, 2015. Uh, Bill Swalski, if you are not a person that follows him and you're a person who's interested in SEO, I would highly encourage you uh, to follow him. A uh, good person to learn from. So let's dive into it. The name of the article, Recalculating PageRank. He says a Google patent was granted on October 20th, 2015, titled Producing a Rank Ranking for Pages Using Distances in a Web Link Graph. A link graph. It presents some changes to Google's original page rank. Now this uh, patent was first applied for in 2006. It was granted nine years later in 2015. So, so Bill says, I read about the very first page rank patent in my post, the first page rank patent in the newest, where I post a link to the original provisional copy of Lawrence Page's improved text searching in hypertext systems. Under this new patent, Google adds a diversified set of trusted pages to act as seed sites. So this person that's on the Reddit thread that was talking about where do sites get authority from in a niche, this is another place where they can get it. Now, I'm going to read this, but keep in mind that since this time, in the four years since this article has came out, uh, Google seems to have given more weight, force multipliers, to hyperlinks that are from very closely industry-related sites to another. So keep that in mind. Okay, right. 
Under this new patent, Google adds a diversified set of trusted pages to act as seed sites. When calculating rankings for pages, Google would calculate a distance from the seed pages to the pages being ranked. A use of a trusted set of seed sites might sound a little like the trust rank approach developed by Stanford and Yahoo a few years ago as described in combating web spam with trust rank. I don't know what role, if any, the Yahoo paper had on the development of the approach in this patent application, but there seems to be similarities. Now here's the new uh, patent. So uh, the abstract, methods, systems, and apparatus, including computer programs encoded on a computer storage medium, so a data center, for producing a ranking of pages on the web. In one aspect, a system receives a set of pages to be ranked, wherein the set of pages are interconnected with links, so hyperlinks. It gets a set of pages to be ranked, and the pages are interconnected with links. Okay. The system also receives a set of seed pages, which include outgoing links to the set of pages. The system then assigns links to the links based on the properties of the links and the properties of the pages attached to the links, so the pages that are getting linked. The system next computes the shortest distances from the set of seed pages to each page in the set of pages based on the lengths of the links between the pages. So it's not just like if you link directly to a page, um, if that would be a distance of one but if uh, a trusted seed site linked to a page that linked to yours, that's a distance of two. But you can also see here that there's uh, properties of links and properties of pages, so they can add different multipliers to this as well. Now, next, the system determines a ranking score for each page in the set of pages based on the computed shortest distances. The system then produces a ranking for the set of pages based on the ranking scores for the set of pages. So this is one aspect of the algorithm. It's not the whole algorithm, but it's one aspect of it when we're talking about ranking a set of pages based on how many links they're getting from trusted seed sites or the distance from incoming links from trusted seed sites. So the shortest distance to recap, the shortest distance would be trusted seed site links directly to you. That's the shortest distance. Next shortest distance would be trusted seed site links to a site that links to you. That's a distance of two. So, so on and so forth. Okay. So the trusted pages in this process appear to follow the same assumption that the seed pages and the Yahoo trust rank approach follow. That is I want you to focus on this line. Good pages seldom point to bad ones. Good pages seldom point to bad ones. The inventor of this patent has been at Google for a while. Back in 2008, he was one of the co-authors of a Google blog post that told us Google had achieved a milestone after indexing a trillion pages. Um, and Nissan Hajaj, I'm probably saying that wrong, has been a senior staff engineer at Google since August of 2004 as an algorithms developer and multidiscipline team leader member for innovative projects in a variety of fields of engineering. Okay. Um, so in 2015, Bill Swalski said, it's difficult to say whether or not Google may have adopted this new ranking approach and made it live. Google has filed a continuation patent of this con uh, continuation patent version of this patent, which was granted in 2018, so that's last year. I wrote about it in this post, page rank update. Let's go to this one, okay? So here's a graph of what has been described. So this is the, the update. So up here, you have the set of seed pages. So they have, uh, this is the way patents are sometimes shown with like these little numbers and stuff like that. But you got these three pages up here, the trusted uh, set. 
and they're linking out to different pages like these appear to link directly this one links directly to these two uh, these link uh, to these two this one links down to this one and then these link down and these link down and you can see there's different distances so some of these have a more direct path than others but these ones down here like for example this one right here this page 126 it appears that it is linked to from a distance of like one two three four it's like four steps from the trusted seed site so there's also multipliers that could be added to these uh, as I'll show here okay so added this is amended uh, July 16th 2019 a Google search engineer on a thread at Hacker News told the world that Google had stopped using the Stanford version of PageRank, which is the old version, back in 2006, the original version, which uh, Barry Schwartz reported on at Search Engine Roundtable. And that search engineer was Jonathan Tang, who has been an inventor at at least one Google patent in the past. Okay, so he said the original PageRank, the original um, way that they measured hyperlinks, the, the flow of the link equity and the link juice, the page rank. The comments here that page rank is Google's secret sauce also aren't really true. Google has not used the original page rank since 2006. The ones about the search and click through data being important are closer, but I suspect that if you made those public, you still wouldn't have an effect of a Google competitor. So they're actually, you know, they're doing other stuff on top of that. So he told us about this change away from that version of PageRank in 2006. They replaced it in 2006 with an algorithm that gives approximately similar results, but is significantly faster to compute. Okay, so, and it goes into some explanation here. There is some, like, kind of calculus and, and trigonometry here. Basically, it's saying this was necessary at the time because the web had grown from 10 million pages to 150 billion pages. And I don't know if you understand the scope of that. One million, it'll say if you had one million seconds, it would be, what, what is it, like uh, 13 hours or something like that. Uh, but like uh, one billion seconds is like 51 years or something ridiculously high like that. So that is how exponentially uh, much the web grew in those years so they had to, to, to compute it in a different way otherwise Google would be completely slow so they had a new mathematical formula okay to recap the newer version of PageRank that this post is about was originally filed by Google in 2006 and describes PageRank as a link analysis approach in the description of the patent doesn't refer to itself as PageRank but it is easy to refer to it after reading the patent as a newer version of PageRank. So it's called something different, but it's building on that original foundation. But it's different. I asked what parameters seed sites in the trusted seed sets might contain, and the patent, both the original and the continuation version of the patent, tell us. In the section of the patent description labeled link graphs and seed sets are some examples. In one embodiment of the present invention, seeds 102 are specially selected. This is the set. Uh, they're specially selected high quality pages which provide good web connectivity to other non seed pages. So they're, they're trusted sites, hand picked trusted sites, but they have a lot of uh, connections to non seed pages. So the patent provides two examples, the Google directory, which was around in 2006, and the New York Times. So we're also told seed sets need to be reliable and diverse enough to cover a wide range of fields of public interests and well-connected to other sites. They should have large numbers of useful outgoing links to, to facilitate identifying other 
useful and high quality pages acting as hubs on the web. So what they're saying is trusted sites at the at the top level, these trusted um, seed sites at the at the level one. It is important when they pick them that they have uh, a lot of connections and hyperlinks out to other sites because that's basically trying to figure out the second tier of seed sites, the next tier down of trusted sites that would provide links to other uh, pages on the web. And the reason why handpicking like seed sites like this is so important, um, and the Yahoo directory like originally was like this too, um, in the very, very early days of the World Wide Web, when uh, Yahoo was there, like the Yahoo directory and the Google directory, these were like human curated things, so they were hand picked. It couldn't just you couldn't just automatically submit it and get in. A human had to approve it, or a human had to pick it. Uh, and in fact, like a long time ago, I was actually like an editor on the um, ODP, the Open Directory Project, um, which later was originally I think it was like. Um, um, uh, open source project. It was later picked up by Mozilla, later picked up by AOL, and then retired. But that was an example of a human curated uh, directory. Like not every site would get in. So, um, but these types of things that they're talking about are sites that you can trust that link to other sites. Uh, so you can you can kind of tell that if a trusted site, something like a a journalistic site with a lot of integrity that's been around for like hundreds of years or decades. If they link to uh, other sites, they're going to be reputable sites because they're putting their reputation on the line when they link to other sites. So that is a way that they could identify uh, second tier sites that, that also link in computing distances. So more on this. So let's look at the actual diagram of this. This is the page rank update. So this is a flow chart. I don't know if you remember this from like math back in uh, grade school, middle school, high school, uh, college, like you'd see flow charts like this. So at the start, it receives a set of pages interconnected with links. So that's the set of pages that we're wanting to rank. So the next step, receive a set of seed pages, including outgoing links to the set of pages. That's the next step. Okay. Assign length values to the, the, the links based on the properties of the links and properties of the pages attached to the links. So properties could be things like could be follow, could be no follow. It could be is this a link in the main part of the content, top part of the page, bottom part of the page? Is it a link from a sidebar or a footer? Um, property could be what is the anchor text within the link? What are the words inside the link? Are they branded? Is it a, an exact match to the keyword? You know, these are all properties that could be assigned to that, but we're still assigning well, you know, and is the site like, you know, is it related uh, to that other site that's being linked to? But we're assigning length values to the links based on the properties of the links and the properties of the pages that are attached to the links. Okay, next step. Compute the shortest distances from the seed pages at the top and like next to the top to each page in the set of pages based on the length of the links. So we're trying to, to basically stack rank the set of pages that, that satisfy this search query. All the pages that are in our set of, you know, if we type something in, here's a set of pages that could possibly satisfy that search query. And one of the micro algorithms that is uh, that we're using is distance from a trusted seed site. That is one of the, just one of the many factors, just one. But this is a small part of the algorithm. 
take this set of pages that can satisfy a search query, stack rank them based on how far they are from trusted seed sites. Okay, so develop a ranking score based on the shortest distances and produce a ranking for the set of pages based on the ranking scores. So that's it. That's the patent. Okay, so the original page rank patent assigned to Stanford University has expired. Google had an exclusive license to use PageRank. So you had a patent. Google filed a PageRank update with a different algorithm. And that PageRank patent filed by Google has been updated as of 2018. So um, there's some stuff here. OK, hold on. OK, a popular, so <clears throat> a popular search engine developed by Google Incorporated Mountain View uses PageRank RTM as a page quality metric for efficiently guiding the process of web crawling, index selection, and web page ranking. Generally, the PageRank technique computes and assigns a PageRank score to each web page it encounters on the web, wherein the PageRank score serves as a measure of the relative quality of a given web page with respect to other web pages. As an aside, this is the thing that you still see. This used to be the thing that you would, you know, see in the Moz bar, like back in the day, um, or SEO Quake. You know, they'd have that uh, a toolbar up there. These are the thing that a lot of proprietary tools they have their own metrics for this. Majestic has Trust Flow, Citation Flow, Ahrefs has um, uh, URL Rank. And domain rank, Moz has uh, Moz rank. These are their own proprietary ways of trying to approximate page rank. That's all these are. They're approximations by these other companies that do not have access to the actual Google patent of the existing current page rank. Uh, that's what these are. So it's giving them a score. Okay. Okay, PageRank generally ensures that important and high quality web pages receive high PageRank scores, which enables a search engine to efficiently rank the search results based on their associated PageRank scores. So links are still vitally important to the ranking algorithm. I don't know that we're ever going to get away from that because there is a lot of, of weight that probably should be assigned to links that are given editorially, like the, the ones that are hard to give uh, one another. Remember, good pages tend to not link to bad pages. Remember that. Okay. Uh, so the continuation patent shows that that, uh, that was granted in 2018. Uh, okay. And uh, recalculating page rank, that it goes back to the other article that we're talking about. Um, okay. The first claim in the newer version of the page rank continuation patent is what is claimed in this patent? A method comprising of obtaining data identifying a set of pages to be ranked, a set of pages that can satisfy a search query, right? Wherein a, each page in the set of pages is connected to at least one other page in the set of pages by a page link. So each page in the set of pages is hyperlinked to another page in that set. So obtaining data identifying a set of n seed pages, the top level ones, or however many that is, they each include at least one outgoing link to a page in the set of pages. So everything in this set, this mathematical set, has at least one link from a trusted seed site or a seed page. Okay. Um, wherein n is greater than one, accessing the respective links assigned to one or more of each of the page links and one or more of the outgoing links and for each page in the set of pages 
identifying a kth <laughs> closest seed page to the page, that's a variable, okay, according to the respective lengths, wherein k is greater than 1 and less than n. So greater than 1, less than the total set. Determining the shortest distance from the kth closest seed page to the page and determining a ranking score for the page based on the determining sh shortest distance wherein the ranking score is a measure of a relative quality of the page relative to other pages in the set of pages. So that's a very complex way of saying we're stack ranking all these pages that where every page in this set has at least one link from a trusted seed site. All right, so the abstract, I'm not going to go over that. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, so uh, I'm not really not. I'm not going to go over all this. It's pretty. I already read this. Um, but uh, that's pretty much like what I'm what we're looking at here. So the way that that it seems to work like now in 2019, going into 2020, is this person's talking about authority. And this person's talking about um, the way that you internally link on your site. Is that going to hinder your authority from being built up in a niche? And I'm going to say, no, it's not going to. What you need to build your authority in a niche when it comes to linking is not... The internal linking is important, yes. But what you need to do as well is get external links from trusted sites and ideally you're getting links from big brand sites. Big brands, remember 2008, remember Eric Schmidt, the then CEO of Google said brands are the solution. They help sort out the cesspool. You could put all the big brands over here and all the rinky dink sites over here. So. What I'm saying to you is, if you want to build authority in your niche, get a link, get links, multiple links from multiple big brands that, that are close to the seed sites at the very, very top. Because the closer that the sites are in your industry that get links from these sites up here, and then you get a link from them, that's what's going to help build your authority in a niche. Hope that answers. My name's John Locke. My business is Lockdown Design and SEO. I'm here every single day making videos on SEO. I hope you're getting something out of this. And I got to say thank you. We have, uh, what is it now? 432 subscribers or something like that. But I am thankful for each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in. I will be here tomorrow. If you have a question, leave it in the comments below, and I'll be very happy to answer. That's it for now. Until next time, peace.